very briefly, I just want to introduce the speakers. Um, on the far right, Ronan Emmett from Boston Scientific. On the couch with him, Paul Deegan from Sanofi. Teresa Maloney, also from Boston Scientific. And Kieran Swords from Dynamic Innovation. So we are going to talk, we're going to try and talk about what are the skills issues that Irish manufacturing needs to fill. It's that simple. And we've decided to talk about five or six key issues that are important. Please, if you, if you have a question, put your hands up. I'll try and get to it or raise it with the individual people. It's a little pre-prepared because obviously in a half an hour, there's not a lot of time to aim. So therefore, I'm going to start at this stage um, with Paul Deegan of, of Sanofi and Waterford. And Paul, what's your take on the skills issues that we face? Okay, good afternoon. So I suppose in terms of, so with Sanofi, we're based here, we're based in Waterford. We're involved in the biopharm industry, the medical device, and also the, and, uh, also the uh, pharma. So we've got, a, I suppose, a multiple product and portfolio in Waterford. So for us, there's a key challenge. Because we're involved in three different industries under the one roof, our challenge is actually getting people uh, available resources within the industry. Um, and I suppose where we're looking at, we're talking about the skills, we're lucky enough to actually partner with Waterford IT, the, the, the Southeast Re Regional Skills Forum, there's Biopharma Skill Nets, there's lots of government agencies out there willing to support us. Um, and where we're finding is we need to engage as an industry. And we're finding, you know, unless we put our money where our mouth is and dedicate a resource to actually building the relationships, with, the com with those institutions that we're not able to actually sell our industry mm -hmm. and we're not able to provide people with the relevant knowledge to actually sell uh, our industry. I suppose... Yeah. Does it start at third level or do you think it starts a little earlier? So it starts earlier and I suppose we talked earlier about actually how we, the school system is instrumental in terms of guiding young people in terms of our career guidance system uh, in terms of the transition year, uh, the, the value of the transition year, which we've heard a lot about in the last couple of days on the rate national radio. Uh, so certainly it is, starts at the school system. Okay. Um, any questions on that? Okay. Just, I'm going to move to Ronan in a second about skills and apprenticeships. I just want to stick with the education bit for a second. Practically, can any of the panel, not just you, Paul, give me two or three things at the, at the uh, if you like, secondary school level and above that pushes people into choosing STEM and their reasons for doing so? I'll give one before I go ahead, um, and it's actually an initiative that a couple of companies in Waterford have taken with Waterford IT is around actually bringing career guidance teachers together yeah. to actually educate them on our industry so that they can actually... Uh, I suppose, pass on that knowledge to their own people. And as a second part of it, we plan on running with WIT a local STEM evening for anyone making uh, career choices in that uh, third year and kind of fifth year CEO years. Okay. Ronan, you have a particular challenge that you want to highlight in terms of skills. Yeah, um, I think we come from a similar place. So in Boston Scientific, if I was to look right now across the three sites in Boston Scientific, we probably have over 120 roles open at the moment that we're trying to fill. So these are highly skilled roles uh, at the moment. More specifically on the skills issue, I suppose what I would like to talk about is I think that when we go back and we look at the journey that Ireland has been on, and I suppose when we go back to the pre-European banking crisis times, I suppose the times of Celtic Ireland, I think there was a real uh, journey that the Institutes of Technology went on. So I think what we saw was we saw the Institutes of Technology trying to compete with the university sector in terms of the courses that they were offering. Um, and I think we lost our focus a little bit on probably some of the more technical type skills jobs that we have. And very specifically what we see within the medical device sector now at the moment is the whole area of apprentices, specifically around apprentice to toolmakers. Um, these weren't, uh, I suppose, jobs that 
parents were particularly encouraging their children to go into at the time that they left school. Everyone wanted to be the, the top engineer or they wanted to, to have the high profile job. And one of the, 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 the implications of that has been that we've been left with a gap now at the moment. So these tool makers in the med device sector, they're key positions. They're highly sustainable jobs, highly skilled jobs, highly paid jobs. And I think it's only now that somebody sort of sat up and realized, wow, we haven't been training the next generation of tool makers to come out. And I think that that probably equates across the apprentice sector. So I think there's an onus on the Institute of Technologies to maybe revert back to delivering first class technical education um, and education that I suppose is very focused towards industry. Okay, fine. Uh, you have a stand, don't you? Well, yeah, we have a stand, so I'm not selling product, I'm selling no, no, no. jobs today at number 75, number come 75. along. <laughs> okay, I, I, just to get across, in case there are any tool makers, and we'll come to that in a second. Um, one of the key things I believe in, and I know you do too, is the question of the importance of the right culture in the place you work. Because um, function is fine, but culture is really important. It's something you and I have talked about prior to this. Would you like to expand a bit on it? Yeah, so I suppose, I mean, we have the skills gap. So the, the big thing then is if you get the right people, you want to keep the right people in the, in, the, in the company. So I suppose it's how long someone will stay within the company. So what's key to all of that is the right culture. So for everybody coming in, we, we try to ensure we have an inclusive environment where respect prevails. And I suppose that people are empowered to do what they're trained to do and to be creative and innovative to, I suppose, excel themselves in each of their roles. So, I mean, that's the type of culture that, that will bring, I suppose, people in, keep people in jobs for longer and you're getting more out of that. And I suppose that links into motivation. I mean, if you're motivated, you're going to get better results. You stay longer with that company and progress through the company. Okay. Um, something, again, you and I agree with, Karen. Passion. Talk to me about the passion needed to get that done. Okay. Hi, my name is Kieran. I happen to be a tool maker, so I share this man's vision in Boston Scientific and completely endorse it. Apprenticeships are great and it's a brilliant foundation uh, for a career. On the passion side of it, um, I've zigzagged my way through life as a tool maker, as a tool design engineer, and as a business development guy internationally. And one of the biggest challenges I had to develop, you know, approximately about 150 million worth of business was motivating people to do what I wanted them to do. And I have a big button on this particular subject because a lot of people in employment, in multinationals in particular, they're not motivated to do their jobs. And a lot of the reasons to do with that is from what I observed and the various people I spoke to, is that they themselves as individuals haven't found their, their core passion in life, their purpose and what they're trying to do. And it boils back into the job, into the, uh, into the school system, particularly into the career guidance. Because what I've observed, we have a program um, that we run to help people find their basic purpose in life. And it's phenomenal. But I never got it in school and my children don't get it in school either. And to find, if you find exactly what you want to do in life, the employers and stuff like that, you will stay with the companies that you want because the companies have a purpose and they're trying to achieve something. And you will add more value to those companies when you go in there because you're motivated, you're going to be efficient, your attitude will be right to learn the skills and come up to speed. The promotional opportunities will crop up. So to me, we have lost our way. We want to be the most innovative country in the world. We need to be that. But it starts early on the education system, not to be just about points, to pass a leave and cert, to get onto a course that you, you, you have a little bit of aptitude in. It's the wrong, wrong way to go. It's to find out what's in you in the first place. What is your core passion? What is it you want? How do you want to express yourself? What's your purpose in life? How do you want to contribute? What sort of company do you want to contribute to? And once you find that, wild horses won't stop you getting the right employment or finding the right company to work with. And you will stay there. There'll be loyalty, to be trust, to be a relationship built up and you can excel through the levels within that company. Because I see in Ireland a lot of company, people are hopping between the companies in that region and it's not good 
uh, because uh, the only people that are winning out of this is all the recruitment companies. They're the ones who are winning. So there's a whole industry created and it needs to stop and it needs to start at the school level because it does lead to drugs, it does lead to bad company. If you're not doing what you want to do in life and kids are doing three or four years in college and they're still wandering or not quite sure. So there's a systemic problem there that needs to be addressed and it needs to stop now. Um, and the companies are taking the extra responsibility to try and fill that gap. But really it's the education system that needs to fill it because it's costing the companies a lot more money than it should. And they're trying to take the extra responsibility to care for them and nurture them. And they're not necessarily getting it from the prospective employees. Okay, thank you, Kieran. Now, any questions at this stage from the floor? Does everybody generally agree with this? Yes, sir. No, it wasn't. No, everybody generally agrees with it. Question at the back. Just one second, we'll get you the microphone. At the back. Oh, this is the microphone. There's, there's only one microphone. Sorry about that. I thought there was a rover. Thank you. It's just a, 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 a comment in relation to the apprenticeship. Yes. The reason that there are no apprentices coming through is that phase one is, the imp uh, is to do with employment. If companies don't take on apprentices, it's no good in blaming the institutes who only deliver phase four and phase six. So the same thing is applying not only in tool making, but in every other trade. They've stopped because there was no employment. Okay, I'm gonna pa pass that to Ronan, who's obviously the passionate man. If we could get that mic back, because there appears to be only one mic, uh, and wait for, for that to come in. So it's partially the fault of the employers for not offering the apprenticeships. Um, yeah, sorry, I, I, I couldn't see who asked. The, ah, okay. <laughs> uh, so I absolutely agree with you. I think that if we look at the reasons why they didn't go in, one, because I suppose a lot of companies involved in those areas of two moving um, probably didn't survive or there weren't employment opportunities. I think in general, I'm not saying that it's the fault of the Institutes of Technology. I think that we need to look at who provides that education. So it was with FOSS, I think it's now with Solus is the name of, 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 of the new agency. I think from an industry point of view, one of the problems we have with the industry point of view is the current structure of the apprenticeship system, the way it consists of a number of blocks in classroom, a number of blocks in industry. And certainly what we would like is we would like to engage with the relevant providers to possibly look at a new way of training apprentices that doesn't involve them going off site for so long. It's a combination of both in company and company. But I do agree with your point. Um, I don't think that there's any one individual piece of that is to blame. I think it was a perfect storm. Um, etc. Um, and it's it's something now that we didn't really think of over the years and it's it's like we've just woken up and decided wow we have a real gap there at the moment how are we going to fill it quickly um, so I think we need to revisit the whole area of apprentice education and it needs to be done in conjunction with those industries interested in it it's not just a Boston scientific problem if I look across yeah. apprentices.ie which is a website for uh, advertising apprentices you will see most of the major US multinationals and multinationals in, in Ireland advertising for different apprentices but I agree with your point. Paul wants to get in there. Yeah, just, I suppose, um, I think I said it earlier, but I think there's, if, if we look at our industry um, in terms of ourselves as an industry group, we look at the education authorities, we look at the actual, um, you know, the school systems, we actually need to come together. Likewise, that the ICT sector did many years ago, they're making a tremendous inroads. They got over 110,000 employees in Ireland compared yep. to 32 in the pharma med device and, and the bio industry. So we need to actually learn some lessons from how they actually partnered the three, the companies, the education institutes, and the school, school groups. Yep. And they did it very successfully. Okay, gentlemen there. There in the middle. Um, I have one further thing to say, but keep going. Yeah. Hi, just a quick question for all the people on the top. Okay, how many apprentices do you actually employ? How many, how many? How many apprentices do you employ? If you could just hand the mic back, because unfortunately we have only one mic. I apologise. 
Um, so we didn't quite we'd employ quite a few across the three sites. So within the medical device sector, all of the improvements to our tools. So we operate full tool rooms within each of our three sites in, in Boston Scientific. So any of the improvements to tools or any of the molding that needs to be done, that's all done in house in, in, in Boston Scientific. Yeah, and, and you've got vacancies as well? Yeah, we have vacancies, yeah. Okay. yeah. I, I, okay, I don't, I don't know, Ronan, you don't know, I, you haven't got a precise, he's looking for a precise number. Do you have a, even a rough number? He doesn't have it, okay. But, but, uh, uh, but the, point, the, point is, is the point he's making, sir, I think, to be fair, is that if you build it, they will come. So if we build an educational infrastructure, there are places there to be filled. They have to be what? Okay, just quickly. Let's get this well, back. They have to provide the apprentice places, okay, to begin with. Well, you can't I think he's saying that they're going to do that. You can't expect people to train no, no, the apprentices and then take them on. No, I agree, but Roland is saying very clearly that there are available now. He's, he's a desperate short of tool makers. Yeah, sure, it, it will take time, but at least we need to wake up and realize we've got an issue. You know? um, I'm trying to draw this together because any other questions in the audience? Because I've got to draw it together and make a few conclusions. Okay, I want to try and draw this together. Uh, anybody in the panel have anything else they want to say quickly? No? Okay. I'm trying to draw this together and come up with some conclusions that have come out of the session. Thank you very much. There's a few that hits me. First of all, education, education, education. The earlier we start engaging with science and technology, the better. Secondly, better career guidance in the system, both the private sectors and trying to resource our schools to get better, better career guidance teachers who are not doing geography and PE and history and physics as well as doing career guidance who are totally focused on that and that's a governmental priority. Thirdly, the need for partnerships as the IT sector have done between uh, the Institute of Technology, the third level education and the industry. Fourthly, the culture that, that's built and that's very, very important to attract and retain the right people. And fifthly, passion to break them together. I'm going to add a sixth, and that's people. And that's behavior, and that's what we do. Um, most people that I've seen walking around the stands today have talked about their functions. Process engineer, lean engineer, six sigma black belt, etc. Ultimately, the skill shortage is about one thing only, and that's people. And all of these ideas that have come through have come through because there is a need for the people, for youngsters, for middle-aged people, for people to be retrained, to go back into the area where we're short. The other elephant in the room, I suggest, is social ostentation. In other words, I don't want my Johnny doing that job because he's on an assembly line, right? And I think there's an elephant in that room about that. Getting the people to realize that that's what they need to do that we need, can get people into apprenticeships because they have a way out, needs joined up thinking. Perhaps there isn't enough of that and there needs to be more of it, right? One final aspect to put it all is the question of behavior. Most people are recruiting through function. I've walked around the stands and I've seen people hiring with job titles. You're not hiring function. You're hiring the behavioral imprint of people. And to get the right people, they've got to have the right behavior, they've got to have the right attitude. That links all of these. That is something that in this country we have not invested time, effort or energy to bring them through. And many of you, I'm sure, in this room today, at some stage, if not now, are in that position where they're unsure of what they need to do. It is due to the individual to stand up and take responsibility. But it's also due in part to the state to give them the resources they need to help them make that decision. I do hope that the conversation has been enlivening and lifting. All the speakers are available afterwards to have a discussion if there's any, any more you need. Um, thank you very, very much for your time and have an enjoyable show.